All right, it is 7.30. I will call this meeting to order. Uh, Wellsco, August 20th, 2020. Uh, 7.30. <clears throat> Uh, you guys can all see the screen. You can see the agenda. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. We have a quorum. Uh, I sent out the minutes for the both meetings. Um, have you guys had a chance to review them? Yes. 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 Excellent. All right. I, I had one question. On the minutes? Yes. The minutes of July 16th, um, number nine, public comment, said an agenda item added on a motion by Mr. Kelly, seconded by Mr. Teitla, motion passed seven to zero, no public comment. What was the agenda item? And it was, was it an agenda item added to this meeting? No, so on the 16th, I forgot to have the public comment on the agenda. So. Um, oh, so that's just, what was added. Public, public comment was added. Gotcha. Yeah, and we will add that again for this meeting as I, uh, I copied the minutes. I copied the agenda template from that meeting and thus have not had public comment on this one. Uh, <laughs> so that will be our. That will be one of our last agenda items to add public comment to this meeting. Okay. I think it would be clearer if you said this agenda item was added. <laughs> All right. I can make that uh, clear on this on these minutes. Since there was no agenda, since, since there was no public comment um, and no motion made, I'm going to leave the minutes as is, if you don't mind. Yes, that's okay. All right. So I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the 16 July 2020 minutes. So moved. That was Tom. Second. Pat. Okay. Who was who was first? Pat. Okay. All right. Um, all in favor to us to approve the 16 July 2020 minutes. As submitted, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? So that will be six to zero. So Peter, just for clarification, somebody's just shown up as a phone number. Do we know who that person is? That is uh, Rich Neal. Okay. So, all right. Uh, next set of minutes are the August 6th special meeting. Uh, has everyone reviewed those minutes? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Rick, I hear a second. Second, Fred Weiss. Fred, okay. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor to approve the August 6th special meeting minutes as submitted, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Abstained, I wasn't there. All right, five to zero, Tom abstains. All right. <clears throat> all right, uh, treasurer's report. Pat, you're up. Yeah, I sent out uh, listing of all the cash accounts showing a total and I also sent to you a listing of um, all the transactions that have not been entered on the books. Those are all the things that once we get going with a, someone with a set of books we have to post all those. They're not as simple as they would look on the face of these. For instance, any payroll uh, entries would be multiple items per person. And um, we have not filed a 941 for June, which is the quarterly report. I cannot locate the first quarter report. 
and I've tried to get together with Amy Tinker uh, to reconstruct it, but she uh, hasn't been available. So if we approve uh, Premier tonight, I will have to go to them and we will have to reconstruct. Uh, Amy Teleport was filed and I can see from the bank accounts that money was deposited with the federal and the state, but I don't have copies of the reports. And we need the first quarter and second quarter 941s for the federal and state to set up the payroll with anyone. So those have to be done. We're probably gonna get, uh, hopefully we can plead the problem of the coronavirus and not having an accounting person for the period. And um, hopefully the feds and the state will waive it. Thanks. If you have any questions on any of that. I do have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Uh, Pat, um, I, I, just a clarification. Uh, on the checking account, when you say the word settlement, what what do you mean by that? Mango Point settlement, East Lime permit settlement. Are you just saying that's money coming in? Yes. When okay. I collect permits, they give me all the copies of the permits, and they give me a, a net check. They retain ten percent of the monies and they cut me a check for the difference. Okay. And then my other question is for all those May checks that cleared in June, um, do we know what they were for? Yes, we do. You were given that when you were given the May financials. There's a bank reconcilement and it tells you each check number and okay. what it was for. Okay. All right. Okay, that's all. That's all I have. Thank you. And I, there are two checks outstanding that are not on there. One is to, uh, I had to go to Staples yesterday to get more uh, regulation for one of the large posters to uh, the chief warden. And then uh, I gave uh, Rich a check for $35 that I did not sign. And um, he, um, he stopped the other day and I signed it for him. So that one's outstanding. What was that? What was that, Pat? I, I gave Rich Shamil the chief warden, the check for $35, I forgot to sign. Okay. So he had to bring it back and I signed it. So there are two outstanding checks. One is for $269.95 to Staples and a 35 something, I forget the pennies on it. That, that's, that's fine. I, I just misheard when you spoke before. All right. Any other questions? All right. I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, accept Pat's treasurer's report. Make a motion that we accept Pat's treasurer's report. Fred Weiss. All right. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Tom, okay. Uh, all in favor to approve the treasurer's report as submitted, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? All right, six to zero. All right, uh, moving on to old business. Discussion, potential action to purchase the shellfish stock from commercial aquaculture suppliers. Uh, Fred, Fred reached out to me to ask if there was anything that uh, he could help out with. And I said that uh, if he wanted to contact the uh, commercial growers again for me, that would be great. So Fred, what, what did you find out? Okay. But Peter, Peter, before you do that, did you miss the chief warden's comments or are we doing that later? Oh, or? oh oops. 
Sorry. Uh, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Rich. Go ahead. Um, well, obviously, we finally opened. Um, I've got the river as posted as we possibly can with the equipment when it was available. Um, the, most of the marine supply stores are, are essentially out of stock with most things. I'm waiting for a couple of more floats to come in that uh, are, I guess are required on the map. I'm going to check with Alyssa and see if I can get away with just one instead of two. Um, the boat's up and running. I brought it in the other day for the uh, oil change and whatnot, and um, it, it had a, some wiring issues where the bilge pump wasn't working, and there was a bunch of corrosion in it. So they got that done, and again, Boats Incorporated had it done the same, essentially the same day for us, so uh, they were good there. Um, the new guy's working out well. I'll the tides are lousy this weekend, but I'll get them out this weekend. They're like at eight o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock at night. But we'll try to get out again, and then I, he's probably all right to go on his own after that. And the uh, new. Go ahead. Who did we hire? Um, his name's Brad Keltonic. From he lives in Norwich. So, Rich, with the new areas, did we have to put up shoreside, the red and white shoreside signs? Um, I have, I put one, one of the uh, shore signs over at the camp. I went over to the, and spoke with the, um, the gentleman that's run it, that runs Camp Net, and he said okay to put them on shore. Um, the other shore signs would be right in people's front yards. So what I did is I put there's floats out on the river with orange flags on them, and there it says you know it says Wellsco open north close south on them, and they coordinate with what's on the map. Um, shy of putting them in people's yards, I didn't know any other way of doing it. So those floats are near the people's yards, but out in the water? Is that what you're They're saying? out in the water. Um, there's one right in front of Bishop um, right now, and then there's another one that was required that's right in the, essentially in the middle of the river north of Smith's Cove. You can see the orange flag when you drive down um, Niantic River Road. They're pretty visible, and, I ch and Alyssa said that those would work. So, um, you know... I, I just I can't see putting them right in somebody's front yard in somebody's yard right in the front of their house on the river. Right, and there have been people claiming there were people out at, this afternoon at low tide. Yeah, they um, they finally you know the the first day it opened there were a couple of people out so um, you know they they were they were excited to get about it. I, people were asking me nonstop everybody I ran into when I was out in the boat. Um, not to mention, you know, people calling the house to find out when we were going to open. Any comments about the closing of uh, Sandy Point? No, not at all. Um, most people say, geez, it's great. We got, we're got we all in new areas. We're going to have a new area that really hasn't been beat up. And, um, you know, and then, then again, they said, geez, there were no clams at Sandy Point anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Yes, yeah, so I think in front of my house now is open year round, so I can just walk yeah. down there and grab, grab some, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it opens up quite a bit of nice area, and a lot of a lot of area that with a little invention people can walk into where they don't necessarily need a boat. Yeah. So, like, it opens up the whole camp, similar to the winter. So. Um, and the camp you know. people, and the camp if you if you're below. Uh, Mean high water, and you just walk out there. They're okay. Yeah, you're fine. If people come in from either um, down by your house or up at the other, um, you know, a little bit north of the Dockaminiums, there they come in and walk along the shore. We're going to run into the problem with the association, though. They've got the field posted. Yeah. Can't hear you, Pat. I said we're going to run into trouble with the uh, association over there. They were already complaining about people parking there. They haven't posted. There's only parking for members. And um, now, that, now that the area, P 
people who used to walk to Sandy Point, the only way they're going to get there is to park somewhere and walk in. And like near Rick's house, um, that's probably what they're going to do. So uh, it's probably going to be a headache uh, so, uh, in the future. You know. Dad, I'm just going to charge 10 bucks a car for my driveway. What do you think? <laughs> 20. 20? Okay. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and other than that, um, I did have that list that I gave you guys last time on, you know, Pete, uh, Pete had asked me what is actually needed for the boat and, you know, some minor stuff, um, you know, some... We don't we don't have any good PFDs on the boat. What we have are those old fashioned orange things. Um, the the good anchor. Most of the stuff on the boat is mine that was spare from my boats. Um, anchor, anchor line, chain. Um, you know, dry boxes, that kind of thing. Um, all minor, pretty much minor stuff. And then the only other thing we're going to need. I can see, well, two things that are a little bit more expensive that are going to come down the road. Um, and I've been trying to get a price from Todd on a new seat for the um, swing back bench, but I haven't heard from them yet. The, the material is starting to wear and crack quite a bit. And then at some point in time, I think we're going to again need to have the helm replaced on the, um, on the console. Um, John Bayruth will put a new one in about I don't know, four or five years ago, six years ago. I don't even remember. But, uh, you know, the boat sits out there 24-7, 365, so it is exposed to the weather quite a bit. So when you're talking about a helm, you mean a steering it's, cable? The steering, the steering wheel. It's, you know, it's, it's getting loose and sloppy. So shouldn't we, shouldn't we have some kind of cover for that? So, it, like you say, it's sitting out in the elements all year round, and you think a cover... Yeah, I suppose if you got a console, we got a console cover, you know, it, they ne there never was one for it. And I just, you know, until you mentioned it, I didn't even think of it, but yeah. You know, I think, I think probably maybe Pat remembers this, but I think way back when we first got that boat, we did have a console cover for it. And after about three months, it was going off the boat somewhere. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we had the... Uh, uh, the T top back then, and when we put the T top on, it would it, it wouldn't fit in there anymore. But we can get a yeah. get a price get a price for um, a cover. And Pat, yeah, I, I, you, I, oh, go ahead. Pardon, pardon me, Rich. Pat, didn't you say you've got a an unlimited amount of anchors in your basement or something? No, I did. I think I, um, matter of fact, I had them down at, um, uh, Brian Sullivan's and they're all, um, I checked the other day. I had, uh, uh, Danford, uh, anchors and, uh, they're all gone. So, so Rich on the uh, PFDs, you're talking about good PFDs for you and Brad to wear, or just extra ones for? Uh, um, well, you know, to to wear when it's crappy weather, particularly when we're out in the winter doing samples and stuff. Um, you know, like I said, th those orange ones, you can't really wear and do anything with those. Um, there were at one point in time when I, well, when I first started, there were some of, with the inflatable CO2 things. But they completely corroded away being stuffed up under the boat, under the front of the boat. Um, you know, I had mentioned it to John, and, you know, he says, well, you got the other ones if you need them, so. So I think that, you know, uh, type 3 PFDs are non-inflatable, but they're pretty comfortable there. Right. You know, like water ski ones yeah. or duck hunting ones or something like that. Yeah. But then should we have some extra just orange ones, you know, emergency ones under the... Uh, Front well, the, those, the, one, the ones we have are good. Um, the two orange ones are good. Um, that's what I've been doing in the winter is I've been wearing my own, you know, uh, type three. Um, and obviously you can move around with it and do things. Um, and, and when you're out there by yourself, obviously I'm going to wear it. So. Yeah, so I think you and Brad should probably get 
you know, modern type threes that fit you, you know, whatever large yeah. or extra large or whatever you need and yeah. that'd probably be a good idea. Yeah. Um, what you call it? And I did. I talked to Pat the other day. I did order a coat, some T-shirts for you know that, that we're wearing with the Wellsco shellfish warden on them. They should be in tomorrow. So we'll all, you know have a have a matching uniform shirt to wear. Kind of you didn't thing. get you didn't get you didn't get Wellsco commissioner T-shirts for us as well. <laughs> hey, get whatever you want printed on them. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had to get them from a new place. My computer completely died, and I don't have any idea where I got them last time. So I got it. I got ended up getting them from another uh, company. Yes, but, it all sounds it all it all sounds reasonable. But I'd like to I'd like us to at least uh, look into maybe getting a console cover to protect all that electric yeah. stuff. Probably not a bad I could, idea. I could I could uh, yeah I can price one out. Um, I gotta just I'm trying to yeah. There's plenty. I think the way they have the center the T top put on, um, there's plenty of room to slip one over and it in it. Um, and cover the console. Yeah. All right. um, they're, they're not very expensive. I think you can get them, you know, probably in a, a forty, fifty dollar range. And I may be way off because the last time I bought one was three boats ago. Yeah. <laughs> I would say though, you know, with boat stuff, you know, the economy one is forty, the regular one is fifty, and the deluxe one is sixty. I'd probably get yeah. the sixty one, knowing that yeah. that thing's outside all winter you know the yeah. junky stuff on, junky stuff on boats doesn't last so. doesn't last at all um no i know that um yeah the uh but that's about it i you know we're up and running um you know Alyssa has been very good as far as you know some is the signage and the way we're doing it i um we didn't have a a, a new closed area b sign at the for the boat ramp. The area B signs we have are very old, and I don't know if any of you went by there, but what I did is I um, took one of the old ones, spray painted a white bar on it, and lettered it um, B North, B South, closed. And um, it looks pretty good, other than the fact it's old. I could, I do have the um, area B open sign, which I could paint the other side, you know, spray it, do a nice job painting it, and relit it out so it looks a little bit better if you want. I saw, I saw them today, Rich. I thought they looked pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Rich, for the future, though, when, when uh, talking to Alicia about the AB, uh, I mean, the uh, B South, B North, um, I did kind of quiz her on will uh, the north open before the south, and she said she thought so. Yeah, which which will be easy because I can just put a little small cover thing over the top of the B north or okay. B south. Okay. Yeah. We want to have... encourage her to open the north sooner than the south. Yeah, I would think she would, but um, she was actually pretty good last year, too, as far as opening. Um, she opened B before the 15th last year, so. What, I, what yeah. month are we talking about for seasonal openings? So it's usually it's November 15th, but uh, Bureau of Aquaculture in the past has uh, counted boats in the marinas, and they've held off our openings. Uh, some have been... Um, you know, the first week or two into December. Okay. Yeah, she's had me, uh, the last few years I've been going to the marinas counting boats and um, trying to find out how many of them have been winterized and how many of them have, uh, you know, heads on them and the whole thing. So uh, it's just something I've been doing for the last few years. And last year it just worked out. She was able to open it earlier than you would think. Yeah. Um the old um, regulation, the disclosure, said 10 boats. The new one says 20 boats. And um, I don't think we've opened um, historically for the last few years on the 15th of November, except for last year. But, yeah, uh, no, it, we, yeah, it was into December, but I think this will change it dramatically. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, just moving the agenda along. So we've, we've obviously morphed this uh, Chief Warden report into Old Business D, Discussion and Purchase of Supplies. So at the last meeting, we did approve uh, $500 uh, rich for those, those um, incidental purchases like okay. light jackets, the anchor, the line, the cord, and some of the other things, the, the safety equipment and things like that. Uh, so, so you do have $500. We did want to discuss some of the details of what you had in mind. Okay. Uh, so, so just, uh, you can, Purchase those, obviously, that's approved. And then uh, figure out, uh, get some quotes on the, the seat or the helm replacement and the console cover. And uh, we'll try and, uh, you know, be proactive as to when those start to go bad, we can replace them before you're embarrassed to be on the boat. Okay. Yeah, no, the, like I said, the, um, the steering now is, it's just it's sloppy it's not it's not unusable it's just but i know it's on its way um and like i said to you i think i said to you directly pete i said you know it's i'm gonna have to do the same thing on my boat but i'm not you know it's 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 in that realm that it's something that's lo i'm looking at in the future so yeah. um I, you know, I just brought it up when you asked me what needed to be done no, that sounds good because I think uh, you don't want to be out there on a winter's day and lose your steering. Oh no, I know, I know. Yeah. All <laughs> right, like you did the shear pin on the motor. Yeah. All right. Uh, is everyone right. good? Good with this uh, item? We'll move on to uh, old business A. All yeah, right. I, I just All right. Say, go just ahead, Pete, or Peter. One final comment. I think. With the 500 that we allocated, that should be more than enough for a two two PFDs for the wardens, anchor and line, cover, yeah, and pro and probably the seat as well. You know, so if you get it all done for 500 bucks, you might as well go ahead and do it. When I when I priced it out at the fender, other than the seat, um, I was well under that. Yeah, because, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think the cover is gonna gonna make it in there unless they have a generic one that you can buy out of a catalog will will that the console yeah. cover or the seat cover the console cover the console cover probably will i wouldn't be surprised they are kind of generic huh. um okay. the the seat cover is where i would i would wonder because the seat itself is like 420 dollars <laughs> so i don't know what the um the top would be and I had some fabric, some um, new fabric put on some of my seats and stuff for my center console, and to have it done piecemeal is ridiculous. To have a company do it, they want ex they get exorbitant prices for um, replacing the vinyl. You're talking about just the seat that you just sit on, seat. or the back, to, just the seat? No, just the, the seat itself where you sit. The, the corners are all starting to tear. And that's and that's removable that cushion. Yeah, you can unscrew it and put another one on. So I'm, I'm yeah. sure they have them, but I e I emailed them, got a week or so ago, and I still have it. I've, and then I re-emailed them. I haven't heard from them yet. So I, I do know that the boating stuff is ridiculous. If you've been into West Marine, there's only about four pieces of clothing in their store, and that's it. Yeah, I was in I was in West Marine uh, a couple of weeks ago, but. If you, let, let's just say you gave me that bottom part of the seat and I took it over to Andy's uh, trim shop in New London. I know them pretty well. Maybe the guy would give me a price to do it, you know, for a couple of All right. I, I, could do, I could do that. I mean, we could take yeah. a look at it. It's, and again, I would just, I'd wait till winter maybe because it'll get, we can get through with the way it is now. It's just, it's one of these things that, again, that it's starting to go. Yeah. And, it, you know, in the future, we're going to need to replace it. Yeah, it would be good if you get get one more winter out of it. That would be great. Yeah. We also had $800 in the um, boat maintenance budget in our in this year's budget. And we've spent for the T-top, it was uh, a little over $300. I think it was $303. So there's, there's plenty of money there uh, that, you know, 
he can uh, take care of these things. To okay, Eric's I will I will um, check into those and I will give you prices on the stuff that hasn't been mentioned. You know, as far as the cover and uh, the seat. To Eric's point in New London, uh, with Andy's, I've had some work done for my boat also, and they're extremely reasonable, and they can uh, do a lot of things that uh, you wouldn't expect them to be able to since they work okay. on cars primarily. But I definitely give right. them a shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I could I could run it over there. That's not a big deal. I could I'll take it off and run it over there. Uh, All right. That's the one right down on was it Broad not Broad Street but yeah, Route eighty five. It's on Broad Street by right. like Secor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I went there one time for the T top, but they couldn't. They they couldn't do it for. Yeah. Yeah. That. I mean, they couldn't do. That, you know, mention my name. They they won't add more than a hundred dollars to it if you mention my name. Okay. <laughs> I've had very good luck with them too. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, I can take that off and run it down. All right, uh, thank you for that, Rich. Um, so uh, again, getting back to old business day, uh, Fred had looked into some of the uh, pricing on shellfish. So Fred, what do you what'd you find out? Okay, as a result of the information that you had given me, Pete, and then I contacted Dave Carey. And I also did some research and I was able to get 14 contacts that I made both through email and telephone. And out of those 14, I got six responses back. And uh, the, uh, the ones that would be able to provide clams, uh, just about everybody can provide oysters. That is not an issue. Uh, scallops is another issue. The only one would be Tim. And on um, the clams, uh, what I found was um, the Norm Bloom, Patty King, they can provide, and they gave me a price listing on that. There's another dealer called H&H &H Shellfish down in the Norwalk area. He's much smaller than Bloom, but he can provide claims, providing he has advanced notice uh, because he has some primary suppliers who he, you know, provide. Uh, not supplies, but who he provides clams to. And uh, those are his primary customers. But he said, if we got on the list early enough, he could probably figure out how to uh, accommodate our needs. Everybody asked for how much, what are we looking for? Um, and I, I didn't really have a good answer for them. I told them I'd get back to them. But um, there's a, uh, Dave Carey had given me name of a Barbara Solis out of uh, Fairfield, uh, shellfish, uh, out of Fairfield, uh, Fairfield Shellfish, and uh, they don't have any clams at all. Marco said he had, Jim Marco said he had clams, uh, but uh, none at this time, but could provide some. Fishers Island, yes, on oysters, uh, Nynick Bay, uh, we've got that documentation. I think, Pete, you shared that with everybody. And um, this H&H &H is, a, uh, like I said, is a small producer. Uh, but he has price listing and he's got them for, uh, everybody has them for the Little Necks, Cherry Stones, Top Necks, and Cohawks. So we can get some prices from them, but everybody's looking for what do we want, especially the smaller dealers, because they can't handle a large volume. Um, in doing so, I talked with uh, Mark Harrell. He works with uh, No Ink Co-op and he, one of the comments he made, and it's something that we had discussed, well, before I got on commission, he had discussed about a year or so ago, and that is the Back River has a large number of clams in it. And his point was, you ought to consider dragging for those clams back there, depurating them in an area, and he thought you could do it in the river, in a closed area that people couldn't get to, which would put us up near the... Uh, uh, conditionally approved uh, seasonal area B North, where we could drop them down in there, leave them for four to six or eight months, whatever it requires. And then we could hopefully become self-sufficient uh, as far as providing our own clams as we needed them by pulling them out of there as we needed them. So I think that's something for us to think about. But um, if, you, if you can give me an idea on how, much, how many clams we're looking for, um, you know, I, I can give these guys some figures uh, volume-wise. 
So, Fred, did you get prices from Bloom and H and H or no? Yes. So, how what do they want for? How much do they want? For? Uh, I can send everybody the price listing. Yeah, you probably should. That's probably not a bad idea. Okay, let me, me do I that. Would, I would say in the past we we don't really buy like a, you know little necks or cherry stones because they're very expensive. We kind of buy the bigger we buy the bigger ones. Okay, here's an idea. Is is an example of it. This is from uh, Patty King, and uh, for 200 top necks it's 45 bucks. For 100 cherry stones 35, and uh, plus d delivery on those. And uh, let's see on. Uh, this is from, uh, oh, these are, scout, these are oysters. From, I got a, also, I got a response from Fisher's Island, um, but that was on oysters, three sporting uh, oysters, not clams. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't have all think it'd be a, I think it would be a problem to get any, uh, any shellfish from out-of-state waters. So, Fred, I wouldn't spend too much time if you go out-of-state. Okay. Have they ever hired a pathologist down at the uh, bureau? I don't right. know. But so, so, um, yeah, Fred, if you could send us those prices, you know, in the past, when we, the last time we bought uh, clams from Jim Marco, he actually gave us a discount for uh, mixed size bags so they don't have to sort them. Uh -huh. So it just fills the bag with whatever. And, and that was a little bit lower price than if you had to sort them. What size bag is this, Pete? That's what uh, they're looking for. Like a big... A burlap bag? Yeah, a big onion bag, maybe 40, 40 pounds or something, maybe. I think they were about 80. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think uh, Pat probably remembers, but we used to go down to uh, Dolan Brothers in Brantford or Bloom. We'd rent trucks. We'd get big, big bags like uh, you know, the, that, yeah. like fertilizer bags that probably did weigh 80 pounds. And you know, granted, it was a while ago that we, it used to be like 15 bucks for one of those or 25 bucks for one of those. So when I'm when I'm well, hearing know, you know, like, like, I'm, when I'm hearing 100 clams for 35 bucks, I'm saying you know that seems retail price. When I don't think we're going to do that, but Fred, I think the way to approach this is let's come up with a figure, a budget, how much we want to spend, and then look for the best price for that. Okay. But it is a good idea if um, if they don't have to sort them and you go with the mix, that's usually the best way because uh, once they dig them up, they don't have to sit there for hours you know, putting it in category. Right. Size. Well, every, everyone asked me, though, how many do you want? And again, I remember the burlap bag, what appeared to be burlap bags to me in the past. Um, but I don't know how many clams going in a burlap bag, to be candid with you. Yeah. So, so in the past, we've made purchases of about $3,000. That was our, our, to my recollection, that was what we've done in the past. Okay. Yeah, two, you know, fifteen hundred, two grand, maybe three grand at the most. And usually, I, you know, the more you buy, the cheaper they should be. They should have volume discounts. So. I think that's why they were asking. Right. I mean, I mean, they were giving me a, I think, a minimum because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't tell them how much. So. And they they're doing it two ways usually. They do certified, meaning we can put them in a harvest area immediately. And if they're uncertified, you have to put them in uh, a closed area and then relay them. So it's, uh, you want certified clams so they can go right into the uh, All right. areas okay. for people to take. All right. Well, I'll get the price listing out to everybody. Um, you have, mm -hmm. Before I do that, you want me to give these guys a call back and give them some kind of a volume and I'll shoot for the 15 to $2,000 area. I can figure out, you know, like for instance, I got, I got these different prices, like cherry stones from one it was 150 for uh, $25. But yeah, I know what you might do is go back to them and say, uh, we know 
historically, if we just get a mix of different sizes, it's cheaper for you to handle them. Uh, what kind of price would you give us then? Okay, from a historic standpoint, who who supplied us so I can go to them and get an idea and what they, how well, they Bloom, Bloom was one and uh, Jim Marco was another. Okay. Well, the, and we've also, we've also bought them from Dolan, Dolan Brothers in Brantford. Dolan Brothers? Dolan right. Brothers in Brantford, although they, they might, you know, maybe they got bought out by Bloom or Bloom bought. And the, and the thing that may have left us historically we used to call the town of Waterford and we'd get a couple of town employees and one of their trucks to go pick it up. I don't know whether that's going to be available anymore. Okay well I'll inquire about delivery and all of that but I just everyone who's asking me the question of volume. Yeah, yeah I'd say take uh, get a mixed price right. and divide that by into 1500 or 2000 and i hate to tell them a, a volume up front a volume a dollar you mean a dollar or a volume no get a get a mixed um volume price them them and divide by that into a budget whether it's fifteen hundred or two thousand, right, right, right. and that right. I think I think the so Pat, I think the only way we can do it is we don't know how many clams. We can't say we want eight thousand clams. We can say we want to spend two or three grand. So I think Fred, you can go there and say our budget's two or three grand, and we either want you know whatever, let them give us a mixed price or the price for the bigger clams. Right. The bigger clams are going to be cheaper. There's no way we can afford you know, little necks and cherry stones. But if it's mixed, you know, tops, quahogs hogs with a few cherry stones mixed in there, if they want to do that one way is okay. Or if they just want to do tops and quahogs. hogs. All right. Well, I was going to start from the volume standpoint first. I was going to say, you know, 500 clams versus 1,000 clams versus 1,500. Is there a price differential? Yeah, more definitely. I order? And if so, give me that, whatever that ladder is. So we get a good idea. But I, Well, unless, you know, unless we buy... A minimum of several thousand clams, it's going to be not worth it to do. Okay, I got it. All right. Um, the, the, the only other thing I, I have to say, if I can just add it to this, only because I was talking to these people about the clams, but in talking to Jim Marco and Mark Harold, both of them went out and dove to check the scallops, just so that you know. Because I think last meeting or the meeting before, there was indications that maybe they weren't doing as well as we thought they should or whatever. Both you of them said. Oysters. I'm sorry, oysters. What did I say? Scallops? Yeah. Yeah, oysters. I got scallops on my mind because I was trying to find some, somebody who dealt in nobody. I mean, everybody down talked the scallop thing. But anyways, that aside, um, they said they dove down, looked at both locations, and thought that they, both locations looked much better than they thought they would look like at this point in time. So just food for thought. All right, Brad, thank you very much for all that work. You're welcome. Um, so uh, moving on to old business B, uh, we finally got the MOU signed. Uh, as Rich said, we are now open, and uh, hopefully this uh, headache is behind us. So, um, Rich, Rich, thank you for all your work you've done. Pat, thank you for the work you've done. Um, so, hopefully we don't have to worry about this. We did move up to an inch and a half rainfall trigger in the river, which is very beneficial. Uh, according to the Bureau of Agriculture uh, numbers that they had in the MOU, that will result in an average of only six closures per year. Uh, so that's very nice. So, and just to let everyone know, I printed out um, the regulations for the river. Um, DABA is still up in the air about the bay, so they're not included. 
Uh, I think we only sold two bay permits last year. It's a couple of young guys want to go out there. So there's no activity and um, sorry, sorry, uh, Rick Cantor, but I don't think uh, the East Lime uh, Harbor Management shellfish are interested in recreational shell fishing out there. I've, uh, but anyway, um, all the changes are in color in red and the map is there. Um, I did print up enlarged maps that are waterproof and um, the chief warden has posted those around the river. Um, if you go down to the launch, there's one right there that you can see. And, um, that That's it. And once I get a reconcilement of what's going on in the Bay, then I'll have new um, regulations printed up. All right. Um, and just uh, for everyone's awareness, I think I've mentioned this in the past. Um, uh, the town of Waterford, I was not able to get a hold of the day. They would not respond to me for whatever reason in their advertising department related to public notices. So the town of Waterford was able to uh, get those public notices in. Um, so they are going to bill Wellsco and uh, each day's public notice costs $500, which is very similar to our scalp notices. So um, when, the, when the bill for roughly a thousand comes in, Pat, you'll pay that. So, <clears throat> um, all right, moving on to old business C. Discussion, potential action transfer of financial responsibilities away from the town of Waterford. Um, I sent you guys the email from Kim Allen uh, describing the um, decision by her department um, that the, the complexities of having a separate set of books for Wells Co. Uh, was going to be more involved and require more uh, manpower than was originally decided. Um, so at that point, Pat has gone out to Premier Accounting as we requested last uh, meeting uh, to confirm that the quote that he got in the spring is still valid. So Pat, I, I don't know if you have any, if you wanna discuss this at all. I have at both the payroll services and the bookkeeping so. Yeah, and the only thing I would comment, all three of the quotes we got the last time were high. You can see from the volume of transactions <laughs> I sent you, it's a lot less, but uh, none of the people that quoted really knew what was uh, a volume of business and uh, what was involved. The big thing is the payroll, uh, because you have... Um, withholding tax, Social Security, Medicare, uh, they have to come out. Uh, since I've been doing the paychecks, I run everything on a Excel sheet and I give uh, Rich a copy of everything involved in withholding and everything on his check. And um, they, they're they gonna have to um, do the payroll. Uh, they have uh, QuickBooks. They use QuickBooks. Although we used QuickBooks for accounting, Amy didn't use QuickBooks for the payroll. She did everything on Excel sheets. So um, the um, quarterly reports are done by QuickBooks. The annual W-2s, W-3s, all that is done by QuickBooks. Um, and then uh, the, they would do the EFTPS, which is the deposit for the feds, and then the same thing, the Department of Revenue for the state 
for all the withholding, uh, Social Security and Medicare. All right, and here is the uh, bookkeeping services. Uh, one thing is every year in the past, we have had to have a, an audit um, from an outside accounting firm. And uh, we'll have to check with uh, the Waterford. You'll still like need that. You, once they do our bookkeeping, they can't do the audit. Right, correct. But what I'm what I'm saying is what we would we would do is um, perhaps because we're now uh, having our accounting done at a at a um, you know more legitimate accounting firm. Um, not that Amy did a bad job, but um, if it was a big firm, maybe the audit could be every other year, or maybe that's something that is up for negotiation. So quick question. Yes. Okay. So, um, so you did validate that the premier prices are still good. Yes. Okay. I and think they're, I think they're high. Uh, initially to post June, uh, to get the 941 for June quarter, get the, uh, the federal and state deposits done to post all of July and August, uh, we're, and we're gonna have to set up the payroll. We're gonna need W-9s, W-4s, some, all the employees, uh, but, and all that information on the historical stuff. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, yeah. uh, uh, just a minute. Uh, so the, the uh, the sheet that you gave us that's being displayed on the, on the uh, screen right now, are, if we agree to that, we're stuck with the monthly $80 plus $2 per check plus the $250 for our bookkeeping. Are you thinking that it's going to be less than that? Yes. Once we get everything up to date, I think the $250 will be a high fee. And have they have they indicated that if it turns out less than what they're, what they're thinking that they will go down from the 250? They all did. When we got the quotes, they all said that. They said if it's if it's less than we projected, then we would adjust accordingly. So the way it stands right now on this sheet of paper, it's three hundred and thirty dollars per month, and we do less than ten checks a month, so that's another twenty bucks. So the way it stands right now, we'd be approving $350 a month for our accounting, correct? Correct. And the big thing about this, uh, with Amy, she did a good job, but if she was on vacation, if she was sick, if she had family problems, like her daughter going to college or whatever, there is always um, a backlog. And with this firm, they have multiple people doing these accounting jobs. So you have a continuity where you didn't have it with Amy. Are they where, are they, where are they located? Yeah, exactly. Um, they're right out in East Lime, and I'm trying to think, uh, uh, you know where the post office is? And right before the post office is Upper Patagansett Road. Yeah. They're right there. It's a little building uh, right there. Well, so are we going to enter, I guess my question is, are we going to enter into a contract with them? Or are they going to bill us accordingly? I mean, the way I see the proposal here, we, it's pretty much like a contract that we're going to be giving them 350 bucks a month, basically. And I don't mind that, but um, if it's going to be less, then maybe we should know if it's going to be less. Well, you're not going to know it until you get to the point they're doing the posting. Right. So I think, they, I think, uh, I don't think we're going to sign a contract with them. We're going to just say, okay, we're willing to go with your services and we can, 
you know, see if we like them or not. If they turn out to be great and less expensive, we can keep them. If they, so say, so hey, we you know, do this month by month, basically? I think so. I don't think there'll That's be any formal cutting. Not going to be any formal contract tying us to them. Okay. Okay. That that I didn't know if we were stuck for a year or so. So we we can go month by month with them. Is that correct, Pat? That's what I understand. Our service is rendered. We just pay as they provide the service. And if we're not happy with them, we can cease the service. Correct. Okay. All right, um, so uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, move forward with the uh, premier accounting doing our payroll and bookkeeping services. I'll make, I'll make a motion we go with uh, premier, you know, up, up to $350 a month with the proviso that if it takes less time than they initially thought that their their fee will be less. And that's contingent on initially, uh, let's face it, they're going to have to do this catch up work. And they're going to be working with stuff from the past. So it's going to be it's going to take some more time. initially. Well, I made a motion, I guess Pat's commenting on it, but not sure. If, I guess we need a second. I would second Eric's motion. It makes sense. So, so Rick, your your motion is um, that we go with Premier up to we pay up to three fifty a month. With the understanding, with the, if, if there is less work, the rate would be adjusted. Right, and also like Pat said at the beginning, if it if it has to be more at the beginning to get them on board to catch up. That's well, we're going to have three months. So if you take that uh, three whatever um, and multiply it by three months, then that's what the bill would be. OK, but still, that's the monthly fee is within the parameters. Right. And it's done a month by month. Correct. Right. But it's so. Nine months. Uh, you're going to do uh, three months uh, with them, so it's really the first three months are kind of tied together, right? Right. Well, it might even be more than that. We have to get it set up. It might be October 1st before we get it up and running because we have to uh, get the historical tax stuff done and uh, we have to set up the payroll on QuickBooks, which means we need all the historical and they have to know what's been deducted from the checks after June that has not been deposited. And that would be deposited as of October 1st. But Pat, would they give us, won't they give us a price on setup? I mean, it's usually that's part of their agreement. They're, they're gonna to have to do some homework before they can jump right in. Seems like that should be work in I by sent time. them the same thing I sent you today, showing all the transactions. Right. But that doesn't take into account that uh, for uh, March, April, I'm sorry, uh, April, May, and June, uh, that the withholding has not been uh, positive. Okay. June has not been entered. So uh, they're going to have to go through all the accounting records and figure it all out. So, so based on that, Rick, Rick, your your motion does seem a little restrictive, and I'm I'm worried that if we don't start to realize a reduction after X number of months, what are we going to do? Um, I think at any moment we can decide it's not working. So I don't, I don't know if you want to modify your motion at all. Well, so let's, so let me ask Pat a question though. So Pat, just to be clear, you're saying they've got a few months to catch up. 
So let's say they got to catch up for four months and it's 350 a month for those four months. So then we get an initial bill for like 1400 bucks. Or are you saying that it's going to be more than 350 a month because they've got more initial work to do at the beginning? Because they're dealing with. Well, so just please. Just, prior so to which, June. So you're saying it's going to be more than 350 a month at the beginning or it's just going to be delayed and it's going to be 350 a month at the beginning? And I don't know at this point, but okay. they have but to I think, go back. Okay, okay, that's the answer. You're not sure. So, Peter, um, I think I said that, you know, with the proviso that as we go on and it's less per month, then hopefully it'll be less than 350. But also at the beginning, if it's more than 350 because they have to catch up, that's okay also. All right. So the motion, the motion will stay is that we will – go with Premier Accounting at $350 a month with the understanding um, that if there is less work, the rate and fee will be adjusted. That's the motion on the table and that's been seconded. Right, but also that at the, if, if, if at the beginning it's more because they have to catch up, then it's okay also. I don't, care if you, I don't care if you put that in the motion or not. I think, when, when I you say, I'm sorry, Fred. When you say it's okay, suppose they came back and said, well, it's going to cost you $1,500 startup or 2000 or 3000 I mean, it should be a cap somewhere along here that we should know what our initial investment is and then what a standard ongoing monthly charge would be. And they should well, be able to tell us that. Well, then, then I don't think we can vote on it until they provide us that information. And they can't provide us that information until Pat goes through all the initial stuff with them. They haven't seen the books. They haven't seen what they have to do. Uh, so, you know, how do you, until we get everything posted to date, how would they know what they're going to have to do to go back in the records? <laughs> Could I suggest, make a suggestion that maybe instead of saying we're starting with July, maybe we should start with April. And, and so it's, it's initiating our, our, because we, we don't have any books for April, May, and June, correct? So no, we, we do have books for April and May. Those, those uh, you were given financial statements historically for, for May. A minute ago, you just said that, that they were going to have to go back to April and May and do pay do on the payroll on the payroll because the payroll <laughs> deposits haven't <laughs> been made. So they're they're going to need to tweak April, May, and June. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So they're going to need to. So I guess we should say we we need a figure from them or. Uh, and, and I wouldn't think that it would be more than the, our monthly fee to do an April, a May, and a June. And especially if it's if for April and May, if it's just tweaking the, the withholding, it shouldn't be 350. I mean, I, this is all guesswork, but we need, I guess we need more concrete answers. And, I, I, I think we can go ahead because... Pat just said we don't have the payroll done for those months. So if they have to do the payroll for those months, it's going to be 80 bucks plus $2 a paycheck, yeah. which, fits, which fits well within our 350 budget. And then when they have to start doing the full month, and if, they, if they're 350, that's in the motion. And then if some time forward, they, they find that they're doing less and it's less, that'd be great too. Right. So basically, starting in April, they can, they can fix all of our books. Well, not not fix our books, but <laughs> correct. Our Build books. our books. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think there's. I don't think I put a date in the motion. It's just like they've got to. You know, they've got to do it. What's necessary? Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, I'll read the motion again. I've added in this section here at the end. So. Uh, we're going to go with Premier Accounting, $350 per month with the understanding that if there's less work, the rate and fee will be adjusted. Uh, rates and fees may be higher initially. Okay, I would just say up to $350, Peter. Just put up to $350. Agree with that. All right. That, that sounds fine. That sounds fine. 
I love those concise motions. So, all right, has everyone heard the motion? Does anyone have any other questions? All right, all in favor to approve the motion of going with Premier Accounting up to $350 a month with the understanding of if there is less work, the rate or fee will be adjusted. The rates and fees may be higher initially. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right, six to zero. All right, the MOU solved and the accounting solved. Those are two of our major accomplishments. That's, those are two headaches that are off of the, uh, off the list. Thank you guys. All right. Now we'll just get to the, uh, <clears throat> get the last sections of the agenda. Um, we've discussed D, uh, new business A. I've had a discussion with Fred about some future shellfish seeding pro projects. Fred, do you have anything to discuss at this point? No, no nothing, Pete, other than this. Um, we're talking, when we're talking seeding, we're talking oysters and scallops and clams, or are we talking a specific shellfish? I think eat, eat any of those, um, you know, the other commission members may have opinions. Obviously the Nyack River was best known for the, the scallop. Uh, if we could restore scallops, that would be great. Um, last year, the, the community purchased oysters. Um, I think that was a, a worthwhile endeavor and I would consider um, if, if Wells Co. wanted to do something like that again, if we, we could either, you know, we could figure out a way to do that. I don't know if people wanted to get more involved with the, the science of how um, prolific the growth is or what species does the best, et cetera. Um, so I'll let others speak. Yeah, the only thing I would say about oysters, uh, current regs cover clams, but it really doesn't cover oysters. So uh, if we're going to have recreational harvesting of oysters in the future, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to write up regulations on oysters. Well, Pat, can't people take oysters now if they want? There's no, no, there's no prohibition on taking oysters, is there? No, but there are state statutes that we don't publish. Uh, if a DEP warden is out there and somebody takes an undersized oyster, they'll, they'll get hit with a fine. Right. So my opinion is that it's, I don't, I don't really vote in favor of. Uh, scallops because it's just a waste of time. Their lifespan is so short. They may or may not live. There's so much predation out there that you can spend a lot of money buying juvenile, oyster, uh, juvenile scallops and you get, you, get, you get nothing. Clams are our most popular product. Everybody, mostly everybody goes for clams. That's usually what we need to reseed is clams. As Pat said, you know, I don't think there's an oyster shortage out there. You can find oysters all over the place. And most of the sh recreational shell fishermen are going for clams. And I will, I will tell you that when I spoke with these 14 or however many people I talked to here, not a single one, because I went into scallops with every one of them. And like I said, uh, Tim was the only one who had scallops on there. And the others just said they wouldn't pursue that because of the comment you just made, Eric. It's, it's, uh, it's, there's no market for it. It's too risky. The uh, mortality is very, very high and so forth. So they talked down the scallops. The clams, there are a limited number of big clamors who we could get product from. And that's the reason when I talked to uh, uh, Marco and, and Harold, 
that they were saying, well, you've got a, an abundance of clams in your river. All you have to do is depurate them and reuse them. Instead of buying new stock, find an area that you can put them where people, and they were very, you know, very vocal on the health issue, but finding a spot. I didn't pursue the cost to do that uh, because I wanted to talk to everyone first, but um, his, their comments were, you know, you got a lot of claims back there. You ought to take advantage of it. Uh, and the other thing is everybody, I mean, literally everybody I talked to is into the oysters. So there's just an abundance of oysters. Right. So a couple, so a couple, couple things. One, you know, Fred alluded to the problem. If we harvest our own clams from the closed areas, you know, what, you know, we have, we have to hire somebody with a dredge because we don't do it ourselves. So what's the cost of hiring somebody with a dredge, putting them and depurating them versus just the price of going to buy certified clams from one of these wholesalers? That can yeah, that's them. what I was going to tell him. Fred, we did that. Uh, we had R&B in with a dredge years ago, I'd say seven, ten years ago. And they took those um, clams out to Long Island Sound and they had a, bay, uh, a bed out there and they um, uh, had the, uh, the state take uh, water on uh, meat samples and approve them. They brought back 25% of the dre uh, the ones they dredge, but they didn't want to do it again. They said there's so much silting in the river that they had to go down four or five feet to find the clams with the dredge. Four and five feet. it wasn't worth their while to um, to do that. Right. Uh, plus, plus, sure. plus, Pat, plus, Pat, plus, you know, that was a pretty good deal for us because we got like 25 or 30% of the clams. So I think the real, the re one of the reasons they don't want to do it again is because it wasn't that profitable for them because they gave us back a third of the clams and they depurated, they did all the work. If you, you could talk to some other commercial guys whose names will remain will, will remain nameless, but they would they would do something like that for you, but they'd give you two to five percent of the clams. And of course, everybody wants to get rid of oysters because they sell most of their oysters to restaurants and most of the restaurants mm -hmm. are closed. So they got tons of oysters they want to get rid of because they got no, nothing to do with them. So I was wondering if Rich is still on the call. Are you still there, Rich? Now he's gone. I was going to have him comment about R and B. But. Well, okay. In my in my spare time, let me pursue uh, people dredging the back river just to see cost wise and what the return is and, and all of that. So we have an idea and we can then balance it against some of these quotes I'm going to try to get from these different clamors. Uh, to that though, uh, Eric, you had made a comment before that we need a X number of clams to make it meaningful. What number did you say? I didn't say a number, and it's it's hard to say that because we re, we really only can go by a budget. You know, if we can spend two or three grand on clams, like I said, we're not buying little necks because they're too expensive. But if you end up buying tops and quahogs, you can get a decent number somewhere in the thousands. You know, I don't I don't know exactly. Okay, because I just figured out one. We can get nine thousand for fifteen hundred bucks. We can get nine thousand clams from one of these quotes we got. And what does that quahogs mean? Or? No, it's cherry stones. Six to ten clams per pound. It's just cherry stone. I thought you said it was thirty-five bucks for a hundred. Hey, pardon? Did you say it was thirty-five bucks for a hundred? Yeah, so that's no twenty-five. Twenty-five cherry stones are. Twenty-five dollars for one hundred and fifty. Okay, so that's fifteen hundred for two fifty. So that's six thousand for a thousand bucks. Yeah, so twelve thousand for two grand. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Okay, I'm just trying to get an idea on what we're looking for. What would be a meaningful volume for us? And the other thing is, and we've talked about this in the past. I don't mean to take up all the time here, but about 
opening different portions of the uh, approved area one year, then have it closed the next year and have another one open. In other words, like rotating crops so that they replenish themselves in, as we go through the years. If you, the area is large enough, it, so it appears, um, and then you have your winter and your, your two winter areas, it, it seems like we can rotate it so that we can not deplete an area like we are now. They get in there and they just take all the clams and then we have to replenish them. If we rotated it, it seems like they would, you know. Yeah, the, the problem that I see with that is that, um, you know, the, the newspaper postings, if we have to uh, put in a public notice about that, that's uh, that's a thousand dollars right off the top. Right. Um, you know, there there really are a lot of clams in the river. When I go clamming, it's never an issue. Um, so, I think now that the Sandy Point area is going to be closed during the winter, but during the summer, um, that's going to create a another area where you could have brood stock or you know you could have a replenishment area uh, just like yeah, on yeah. the just like on the southern part of the river um, that's only open in the winter there's there's a lot of clams in there um, I don't know that clams are in short supply well uh, the, the people I talked to only two of them have clams available and I, they have customers where they're committed to them so when when we say that I yeah, I only ended up with two that said they right, but, be able right, to so, no. Yeah, but so we haven't bought clams in I believe maybe three or four years. All right. And and uh we are doing as well as we have ever done with permit sales. So people know the Nyanic River has clams. It's sustained itself. There seems to be a natural succession of, of stock that is doing very well. Um, exactly. You know, and it, it's just the numbers. Right. I think our permits are priced correctly so that they're not overfished. I think we have a very nice balance of having open and closed areas. I think having the northern part of the river closed permanently, just uh, putting out seed clam into the water is very helpful. So, um, you know, Keeney Cove and probably the entrance of Smith Cove, all of those factors are, are very favorable for us to, to maintain a healthy clam stock. Okay. And now on the oyster, on the oyster piece of it then, um, and I don't know, if, you know, if, it, if this is our, in our bailiwick or if it's in the, uh, if it's in the watershed, but as far as pushing oysters in the river for water quality as opposed to recreational harvest of, of oysters. How, how does the group feel about whether we should push that issue about putting oysters in the river? Not partially for harvest, recreational harvest, but the other for water quality to, that would help other shellfish. Actually, actually, Fred, I was going that that was one of the things I was going to bring up when the uh, private group uh, bought all those oysters last year, the 100,000 oysters, and they're doing well. And it, it was mostly for water quality rather than shellfishing. And um, I think part of the deal was that we were going to, Wellsco was going to, if it worked out well, possibly invest $10,000 and buy oysters too uh, for water quality. I, I'm definitely in favor of that. We've got a very large, we've got a lot of money and if there are plenty of clams and stuff, why not improve the water quality, which will, which will in turn increase all the shellfish and the, all, the, all the living things in the river. You know, I would like to temper our expectations on the water quality. Um, I did speak to a uh, marine biologist over at UConn, 
Avery Point, who is an expert in the Nyanic River and the levels of nitrogen. And uh, she has done modeling on how many oysters it would take to remove the nitrogen that is flowing into the river that's excess. And um, the, the number of oysters is just phenomenally high. And I just wanted to make sure that if, if we bought 100,000 oysters, that seems like a lot, but it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be a, a full percentage of being able to remove um, just 1% of the nitrogen in the water. So, you know, every, every little bit helps, but I just want to make sure everyone knows that, you know, you're not going to notice a difference until you really start to have huge numbers of oysters. But, but is, this, is this something then we should be working with watershed with, uh, yeah, watershed with uh, on, a, on a cooperative basis? I mean, their, their whole thing is about improving water quality. Ours is about, you know, improving shellfish uh, in concert with water quality, but. Um, right, so, yeah. so, so Pete and I are both on Nyanic River Watershed Committee. Right. And Watershed Committee's uh, focus is more on preventing nitrogen or educating people to uh, prevent non-point source pollution in the river, meaning not coming out of a pipe, but, but just run off from the land. You know, if you go up uh, Route 85, there's all these big housing developments. You got Costco now, you got all those apartments on the hill behind Costco. So all that runoff eventually makes its way into the river. And that's gonna be more of a detriment than you can overcome by putting shellfish in the river, you know, to, to, to clean that up. There's no question that shellfish helps. It, it helps clean the water. But if we, if we want to keep the river healthy, we need to focus, as the Watershed Committee does, on educating people and seeing if the towns will, you know, regulate, you know, you know, there's some easy things you can do to, to, to mitigate stormwater runoff. So that, that's really a focus if you want the river to be healthy. Is the Watershed Committee working on that, Eric? I think that's what we've been doing for, since I've been on it. I don't know how, how, how long ago did we start, Pete? And it yeah, it's like been, every meeting. It's been many, much many years. So there's been a number of projects that you can see around both towns, uh, East Lyme and Waterford, um, you know, down near... Um, may go point, there are trees that are planted that are, that are tree filters. And, and then at the East Lyme High School parking lot, they worked with the town and they installed a, a catch basin underneath the parking lot. So when all the water runs over the asphalt, it goes into this catch basin and then it slowly percolates through the ground as opposed to just pouring into Latimer Brook and then into the Nyanic River. So, and then, um, you know, so there's a number of projects that are around town that you can see. And um, that is, as Rick said, to, to mitigate the stormwater run runoff. I think, so, Pete, the I think Pete, the first, uh, the first tree filter project was on Colony Road. And there's also a rain gardens. There are people who can put in rain gardens. So if they have a, uh, you know, a, a lawn that, that abuts uh, one of the streams, whether it's Latimer Brook or Cranberry Brook or some of those other things, they put these rain gardens in and the rain runs into these areas first where the, the plants and the gravel and the sand, you know, take a lot of the nutrients out before it runs into the brooks, before it runs down into the river. So should we be, is it part of our, uh, vision to perhaps financially um, support one of their projects so that they can do more of their projects. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure that I, that I think we should fund any of their projects, but we sure certainly should promote healthy practices. I think, you know, Fred originally used the word push. So to me, push means promote, educate, but it doesn't necessarily mean finance those things. 
No, but I, and I would agree. I, I, but I, not to be a smart mouth here, but I would liken a rain garden to putting uh, 50,000 oysters in the river as far as the impact that one rain garden does on the river as far as pollution is concerned. And since shellfish is our bailiwick, uh, it seems to me that while, yes, we should work with watershed as you guys are, and we all should, but I still think there it, there is opportunity here to to accomplish two things at one time. One is the water quality, which which leads to benefits to us. The other, and that's oysters, not for for recreational harvesting, but then a portion of that to be oysters for recreational harvesting. I mean, we could become a local area for oysters. If we identify the areas, because as we both know, all know rather, oysters and clams aren't necessarily compatible when you put them in the same area. I mean, it's just, you don't work the two together. So the, you, we should separate that and identify some other areas in the river where oysters, we could start promoting oysters. And I think people would go out and get them, especially down by the, um, Causeway. I yeah. mean, that, those rocks down there and all of that stuff, that's, you know, that's what oysters are after. And I've been down in that area and that, that, that area is very hard ground in there, as is the area off of which is the uh, uh, sec uh, section B, the south end of the river. That's very hard ground in there also. And I know that there's winter clamming, but we could pick us a portion of that for oysters and start putting oysters in a particular area so that people could go out and do both. Friend, um, uh, the uh, Bureau was collecting uh, oyster uh, shells and they had, they had um, this year when we met in January, they had a picture of a huge pile of oyster shells. But one of the one of the uh, problems with this uh, seeding will will set much better if they're shelled down, and you might call Dave Carey and ask Dave, would they make? Uh, some of that shell available to us. All right, I can do that. Because it would be good for us to identify an area that we could promote oystering in that particular area. And, yeah. And, you know, it, when the um, soil samples were done, um, the only two places in the river they felt that clams and oysters were good were horse point and sandy point because of the sandy bottoms but i would, I, but I, I would have to take issue with them and i'd be more than glad to go out on a boat with them and walk along the the flats off uh, from bishop down towards the bridge that that ground is very hard it's very mm -hmm. solid and it's not that mucky stuff that is often referred to as in the back river. So, but the other question we there need to would back be a little bit on some of this stuff. Would the bureau allow that to be open um, late in the year? I don't. If I we, don't know. I, I again. Well, a whole nother discussion, and I, I don't want to get into it now about this twenty boat thing. But um, okay. So Fred, I think it's a good idea. Every little bit counts, even though uh, you know it might only remove a fraction of nitrogen. I think it's a step in the right direction. And um, you know, if if there's inland mitigation efforts, and then we have in water uh, activities that will improve water quality, I think that's all a step in the right direction. Yeah. And Jim Marco did have oysters along the sandbar. When when they plant when they put them out there, you mean? 
Did she? Yeah, years ago. No, years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, Jim Jim Marco and Captain John had a project along the sandbar, and I think it was like three years ago. What's his number two? Um, you said his name earlier. He was the one that suggested. Mark uh, Harold. Re Harold. Harold was one, I think it was maybe seven years ago, he put seed in there, oyster seed. And then Harold, I think about three years ago, collected the uh, mature oysters out of there. Huh. It, and we didn't close it off and people were in there clamming and uh, taking some of the oysters too. Well, it'd be a nice addition to the river, that's all. I'm going to look into it if it's all right, you guys, and see sure. what I can come up with. I think it's a great idea. All right. All right. Thank you, Fred. You're all right. Uh, next agenda item, ex officio com uh, comments. Is Dan on the line? All right. Uh, no ex officio comments. Uh, correspondence, I think we've already discussed this, the oyster seeding email. Uh, Lisa Winkler sent a email. Uh, she was the, the project uh, manager for last year's uh, community-based purchase of the oysters. And um, as was described, Jim Marco has, has looked around and has uh, thought his oysters were doing well that he put in last year. So that's good news. <clears throat> um, all right, so I, I did not have public comment on the agenda. So I would like to add that to the agenda. Do I hear a motion to add that? To make a motion, we add public comment to the agenda. Second. Right. Second is Fred Wise. All in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Six to zero. Okay, great. Uh, public comment is now on the agenda. Um, if there's anyone online, um, I can let me see here. Um, I can unmute your lines if you'd like. I have unmuted both of your lines, Ellen and Terry. Um, if you guys would like to speak, just state your name and address, and the floor is yours. All right. Um, they have both muted their lines, so I take that as a uh, no comment. Um, so at this point, uh, we have reached the end of our agenda. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Um, second. Second. Fred Wise, second. Okay. All in favor to adjourn, 9.03 p.m. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone want to stay on line and object? <laughs> okay. No objections. Uh, any abstentions? All right, thank you very much. Um, I think since we are all caught up with our major issues, uh, we will have our next meeting a month away. Uh, I don't see a need for having one in two weeks. So um, thank you everyone and have a good weekend. Thanks, you too. Bye. All right.